Well, how you doing, everybody? Today, we're gonna take a look at Criminal, directed by Ariel Vronin and starring Kevin Costner, Gary Oldman, and Tommy Lee Jones. And very briefly, Ryan Reynolds. The story takes place in London, and Reynolds is a CIA agent working with a mysterious hacker who calls himself the Dutchman. He's not a very creative hacker. The Dutchman has somehow designed a program that allows him to remotely take over any missile launcher controlled by the United States, even if that missile launcher happens to be on a submarine, which I'm pretty sure is impossible, but okay. The Dutchman has agreed to sell his software to the United States for a paltry sum of $10 million, and Reynolds' job is basically to give the Dutchman the money so he will hand over the program and piss off. Unfortunately, he's captured before he can meet with the Dutchman by a Spanish anarchist who wants the program for himself because he's tired of the corruption and the world's governments and banks and yada yada yada, and he believes the only solution is to nuke the shit out of everything. Bit drastic, but okay. The anarchist tries to get the information out of him and even tortures him by shoving a cattle prod in his mouth in an incredibly brutal scene. Although, if you want a guy to talk, putting a cattle prod in his mouth is probably not the way to do that. You need to work on your torture tactics there, bud. But Reynolds keeps his mouth shut and is eventually killed, and for some strange reason, he never bothered to tell his superiors where the Dutchman was hiding out. So they are completely in the dark, and the only answers to their questions are trapped somewhere up in Reynolds' head. So in order to get this information, they have to resort to an experimental medical procedure that transfers the memories in his head into the head of Kevin Costner who happens to be a sociopathic criminal. What could possibly go wrong? Of course, he soon escapes CIA custody, and over time, crazy Costner starts to learn empathy from Reynolds' memories as he searches for some money he stashed that was intended for the Dutchman, but he never got to deliver because of his untimely demise. Obviously, this movie has an all-star cast and a pretty interesting premise, implanting the memories of someone else into your own head and trying to reconcile your mind with theirs is a neat idea. It's too bad the script isn't so hot. But considering this came from the writing team that gave us Double Jeopardy, I guess we shouldn't be surprised. The story gets pretty ridiculous right out of the gate. Both the CIA and the Spanish anarchist are able to track pretty much anyone they want using various technologies like cell phones and CCTV cameras with an insane degree of accuracy. And when Reynolds realizes the anarchist is onto him at the beginning of the movie, he does his best to ditch him and his cohorts and even drops his cell phone so they can't track his location just before he jumps into a taxi. But this does not stop them for one second as they somehow immediately know what taxi he's in and get a look at him by hacking into the cab's security camera. And about as fast as you can sneeze, they suddenly hack into the driver's cell phone and screw with the GPS, so instead of leading them to Reynolds' CIA buddies, it takes them right into a trap. This is, of course, completely preposterous, but I could probably suspend my disbelief a little bit as long as it was consistent. But it is anything but. This amazing magical tracking ability only seems to work when it's convenient for the plot. Somehow in the middle of being tracked by both his friends and his enemies, Reynolds picks up a bag of money intended for the Dutchman and manages to evade surveillance just long enough to stash the money without either the good guys or the bad guys having the slightest freaking clue where he left it. And the amazing thing is, he didn't even stash it in some random location. He put it in the library at the university his wife teaches at. Oh, it gets better. The Dutchman is hiding in his wife's office. And nobody ever thought to look there. This movie is kind of stupid. And after they transfer Reynolds' memories into Kevin Costner's brain and he inevitably escapes, a little too easily, I might add, they cannot find him to save their lives. He completely vanishes. I don't know how, because while he's out of their custody, he's going around killing people and beating the shit out of random guys and even stealing a freaking van. You'd think all they'd have to do to find him is just follow the police sirens. 
Although, come to think of it, the police are largely absent from this movie. I don't know how, but they are. The memory transfer procedure itself and their explanation for why a deranged, violent lunatic with a physically damaged brain is somehow the ideal candidate for the transfer of this highly sensitive information is comical at best. Likewise, for the CIA's handling of the procedure, as Gary Oldman, who plays the agent in charge of all of this, of course has no time at all to waste on silly things like, you know, relying on the knowledge and experience of the trained medical professionals who obviously know a lot more about this highly experimental procedure than he would. No, no, no. He's in charge, damn it. And I don't know how they came up with the names for some of these characters, but some of them are just downright silly. Bill Pope, Jericho Stewart, Jericho spelled without an H for some reason, Quaker Wells, Peter Greensleeves, what? And Tommy Lee Jones' character, this mad scientist of sorts who created this experimental memory transfer procedure, is named Dr. Franks. Get it? And the name of the Spanish anarchist is Hagbardaka Heimdall because that sure sounds like a Spanish name. The directing, I suppose, is adequate, nothing really to write home about. It's your pretty standard action movie, and that's about it. And the acting, who oh boy, it is very hit and miss, much more so than you would expect from a movie with this cast. I mean, Reynolds is okay, although he's in such a small chunk of the movie, it hardly matters. Gal Gadot, and it is Gadot, apparently, not Gadot. The T is not silent, that's my fault. Uh, but I've noticed I'm not the only one who makes that mistake, so cut me some slack. But anyway, Gal Gadot is also okay, although she doesn't really have all that much to do except play the role of the hostage. Twice, in fact. Gary Oldman has one volume in this movie, and it is way up here. He is shouting all the goddamn time. Shouting every single line in this movie, even when there's no reason to. That's all he knows how to do. And Tommy Lee Jones... Oh, that poor man. He looks so dejected every time he's on camera. He just looks like he would rather be anywhere else. I kind of felt bad for him. The only thing that saves this movie from being a complete disaster is, oddly enough, Kevin Costner, who I'm normally not a huge fan of, but he was really good in this movie. I totally buy him as this emotionless criminal who gets off on beating the shit out of other people and stealing their stuff, and whenever he's on camera, he's pretty entertaining. There's a scene in this movie where he's at a pharmacy trying to get some meds because these memories swirling around in his mind are giving him a nasty headache, and he screams at the pharmacist as she's trying to fill up these pills, Hey! Faster the fuck up! Which is such a great line, I love that. He's clearly enjoying this role, and it's just a shame that this movie is not anywhere near as good as he clearly wants it to be. I will say I'm not very crazy about one line that he keeps repeating throughout the movie. You hurt me, I hurt you worse. I get the feeling the movie so desperately wanted to turn that into a tagline, and it's just not happening. In the end, I really can't recommend anyone see this movie in theaters because it's just not worth the ticket price. And honestly, if you're going to see a movie in theaters this weekend, it should be The Jungle Book. But if you like the idea of a batshit crazy Kevin Costner going on a rampage, I would say wait for it to hit Redbox. And that's all I have to say about Criminal. So until next time, take care.